Holly Rowe will be part of ESPN's college game day coverage, Ohio State and Iowa. Caitlin Clark needing 18 points to surpass Pete Maravich for the most career points in college basketball history. Always great to see the smiling face of Holly Rowe, who joins us now. What's this experience been like for you covering Caitlin Clark? It's actually been very wild because, you know, we've, I've been covering women's college basketball for 30 years. I have seen a lot. I have seen the height of UConn's greatness. I've seen Maya Moore, Candace Parker, you know, some of the hype around some of these big athletes. And I just haven't ever seen anything like this. I was in Nebraska the day she had a chance to break the first division one record. I was in Minnesota night before last, and it is absolute chaos, adoration, you know, little girls, um, there's thousands of number 22 jerseys, little girls screaming, Caitlin, Caitlin. I mean, it's just really, it's precious. It's amazing. And I think of the legacy that she's leaving. All these little girls, they'll remember this for the rest of their lives. They'll love basketball for the rest of their lives. And I've run into people like one dad who brought his daughter from Canada, who flew in from Alberta to watch Caitlin Clark play. Another mother of three that drove a thousand miles from Arkansas to Nebraska to see Caitlin Clark play and Iowa. So it's been really wild. Feels like it's boy band type stuff, like One Direction or, you know, throw out in sync. And Taylor Swift, come on. It's Taylor Swift at its finest. Okay. And, and boy bands. Well, I'm Taylor just. Taylor Swift's the oddest person in sport or in, in uh, you know, fandom. Well, I, I guess just the, the frenzy surrounding yeah. something like that. But you're right. If you want to put, you know, she's the Taylor Swift of sports here with, uh, you know, what's happened. How has she changed in the last couple of years with all of this? Or how has she changed? No, I would say there's a couple of ways she's changed. Number one, um, she's had to get an agency. You know, she was doing this and her family were kind of doing this on their own till midway through this season. And the crush just got too big and the sponsorship opportunities just got too big. She's now signed with some of the biggest brands we have in America, you know, in Nike, uh, Gatorade and Nike um, State Farm. And so she's getting help from an agency and it's really interesting how they navigate. Like I can put in requests with their sports information people, but then they have to go through the agency to get to her. It's a lot, but her as a person, the only thing she's changed is she's gotten better on the basketball court. She's handling this so well. I've asked her, you know, do you feel pressure? Is this overwhelming? Because I feel overwhelmed at these games with all this crush of people. And she said, no, I'm just enjoying every second and and she is comfortable on the court she is embracing all of this um madness and 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 loving it and it's not a collective like nil she actually has true sponsors not somebody taking up money to give to her therefore that should translate to the wnba i saw where the sports business reporter darren Ravel said she's going to take a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar pay cut and i'm thinking I don't think they just invested in Caitlin Clark at Iowa. They're investing in Caitlin Clark. Yes, I think that would probably be wildly inaccurate because she'll only get more marketing money in the WNBA. You know, there is a lot in collectives. There is a lot in NIL and college right now, but there's a lot of money in the WNBA. I mean, stars are making, you know, millions of dollars. Maybe the salaries are not where they need to be, but I promise you, Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart, the top players in the WNBA are making in the millions um, with all of their endorsement deals. And Caitlin Clark is the hottest thing going to a Midwest team, likely in the Indiana Fever. It's a five hour drive from Iowa. You you don't mean to tell me all these Iowa fans aren't going to drive. They're they're doing that every weekend anyway to come and see Caitlin Clark play. So I think it's only going to get bigger and better for her. And, you know, the WNBA has marketing money. There is money there. I I think that's a little bit of a misnomer. Maybe it's not as much as the men. There's plenty of money there to go around. We were wondering about this, the impact Steph Curry has had on Caitlin Clark. And if we go back 10 or 11 years ago, I think that's where Steph hit a shot. Mike Breen had the call, and or 2015. And it was like so deep, the shot, and it, it looked like it was a bad shot. And I just wonder if she's watching that or what that meant to her when she sees somebody that she wants to emulate. And some of those shots she takes, even, you know, the, uh, her record setter, like those aren't good shots for anybody but her. And it's the same thing with Steph. Has she talked about Steph Curry's impact on her? 
She has. She's talked about Steph. She's talked about Maya Moore was her favorite player growing up. He played for the Minnesota Lynx. She went to a lot of Lynx games and she wanted to be like Maya Moore when she grew up. And the the kind of the cool story right now too is um, Pistol Pete. You know, she's 18 points away from breaking Pistol Pete Maravich's record. When she was little, they called her Ponytail Pete. And because she was doing this at a very young age as a little, little kid, she played against boys for much of her life growing up. And she figured out that's how I can get my shot off is from deep. <laughs> and, um, and then people suggested to her that she watched Pistol Pete YouTube videos. So she did that as a kid. And then she has grown up in the Steph era. I know he has been a huge um, influence and mentor of hers. I was able to catch up with Steph at an NBA game last week. And he sent me this really sweet shout out for Caitlin. And what he told me was he loves her game. He loves how fearless she plays. He loves her range, obviously, but he loves the poise with which she's carrying the kind of the weight of women's basketball on her shoulders so gracefully. And he said, I know what it's like to chase records and have these eyes and this pressure. And he said, I'm impressed the most with how she is carrying herself. I thought that was really sweet from Steph. We're talking to Holly Rowe. She's been on the road with Caitlin Clark. Uh, College game day is going to be at Iowa. It's Ohio State against Iowa coming up on Sunday. And Caitlin needing 18 points to surpass Pete Maravich. She was on with us, I think it was a year ago. And I did ask her about maybe staying an extra year. How much thought did she give to that COVID year? I think she did think about it quite a bit. And she just barely made her decision yesterday. And, you know, I've talked to her at points along the year about it. And she said, I really don't know. I I really am not sure. I think there's this real um, desire to stay and keep giving these fans in Iowa what they want. I mean, these little girls, Dan, I just hope you can watch um, Sunday and see this. It is so precious. The, The love and adoration, it's just incredible. But I do think one reality is all of her seniors that she came in with are leaving, you know, and you know what it's like, um, you, you don't want to be the old guy at the frat party, right? Yeah. And, or maybe you do. I don't know. But she, um, she's just like, all my friends are leaving. I've been here. I've done what I can. She's broken all the records. Um, you know, she's got one more to go in Pete Maravich. But I think that she understands. She wants to be good in the WNBA. And, and now is the time. She's young. Uh, you know, you don't want too many miles on the tires, as they say. And she plays hard. I think she's ready. And... I guess we're going to have some kind of three-point shooting contest next year where Sabrina's in it, Steph's in it, Caitlin's in it, and then who would be the other person you would put in? Dame. Okay. Dame Lillard. So you would put Caitlin and Dame versus Sabrina and Steph? I like it. Great TV. The the ratings went up for the All-Star experience when Sabrina and Steph did that competition. I find that really interesting that a WNBA star is helping increase the ratings for the NBA All-Star. That is a really interesting topic. But, you know, it's kind of must-see television, and I love it. It's kind of the battle of the sexes, the battle of the shooters, and I think Caitlin Clark would bring even more eyes to that. Sabrina's a huge star in her own right, but Caitlin Clark's hot right now, and I think that would be much watched TV. Great to see you. Thank you again. Thanks for having me. I love talking to you, and I just want to say you've been the best for a long, long time, and I appreciate you and admire you greatly. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate that. That's uh, Holly Rowe from the Mothership. She'll be there with the uh, game day crew. It'll be Ohio State at Iowa rematch. That was a great game last time around in Columbus when uh, Ohio State won that one, I believe, in overtime.